In many ways, life in the United States is back to normal, but the pandemic is far from over. COVID is not over. There's a lot of work to do. We still have three to 400 Americans dying every day, uh, tens of thousands of people getting infected every day. There is a lot of work to do. So who is most likely to die of COVID-19 in the United States? Older people are most at risk. Those over 65 and especially those over 85 and dealing with underlying health conditions plus those living in nursing homes. We're always most concerned about people who are at highest risk, right? And so what we know is that people who are older, people who live in uh, congregate care settings, they tend to be the highest risk for poor outcomes. Also at high risk, the unvaccinated. We're here with a simple message. Get vaccinated. Update your, vac your COVID vaccine. It's incredibly effective, but the truth is not enough people are getting it. Men are somewhat more likely to die from COVID-19 in the U.S., likely due to underlying health issues and occupational exposure hazards. Those in rural areas are more likely to die than those in metropolitan areas. In the early days of the pandemic, African Americans and Latinos were at significantly higher risk of dying, but those differences have been greatly reduced in recent months. COVID-19 deaths in young children remain rare. There's no doubt the situation in the U.S. is far better than it was before vaccines became widely available, but the ongoing death toll is staggering. COVID-19 remains the third leading cause of death in the United States. China has taken a far more aggressive approach and seen only a handful of deaths over the last six months. We must unswervingly adhere to putting people first and putting lives first unswervingly adhere to the general strategy of simultaneously preventing the import of cases and the rebound of local infections and the dynamic zero COVID policy. Different countries have taken different approaches to balancing the economic and social impacts of COVID-19. One thing appears clear, a lasting recovery will depend on resolving the health crisis. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.